This will be my review of episode seven of season two of The Wheel of Time. In today's video, we're gonna run through all the things I loved, the things I did not love, and I'll give my overall thoughts on the episode before finally giving the episode a rating. So join me today as I recap and review episode seven of The Wheel of Time, season two, titled Days de Mar. Now, before we dive into the recap, take a quick moment and like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release more Wheel of Time content. Did you know that more than half of you that watch these videos are not subscribed? Some of you may not even realize that you aren't. Take a second, hit the subscribe button, and make sure to also hit the bell icon so you'll be updated when I release stuff. That's all I make here on the channel, and there are tons of lore videos all over the channel if you want to learn more about the Wheel of Time, especially if you just watch the show. Let's kick things off with a recap of what happened in the episode, and we will start with Matt. Matt begins the episode in Kyrian right after he ditched Rand in the last episode. As he's pacing around, an unknown man knocks him unconscious and he wakes up in Falm, which is like across the continent, with Lanfear also being there, and then she's like, hey, I just did somebody a favor, who I think is a Shamael. Later, Matt talks with Ashamael, who explains that he wants Matt to drink a tea that will cause him to see his past lives or potential lives. It's kind of vague what he's saying. Matt ends up drinking the tea and he hallucinates visions of his mother telling him that he'll be just like his father. He sees himself doing all kinds of horrible things like he's hanging, which could be foreshadowing, by the way. He's also seen committing murder, all kinds of nasty stuff. Finally, at the end of his bad trip on those mushrooms or whatever that was, he is in Ashamael's arms asking, how Ashamael can make it all stop. Now, speaking of fall, Elaine and Nynaeve are still searching for a way to free Egwene. They meet with Loyal in the city, and he tells them that she is being held in the kennels. He tells them that only Suldam and their Damani will be let in, and they can't even get close to it, but they have an idea. So later, they capture a Suldam using the Idom that they had from before, and then Elaine knocks her out. Egwene is still captive. She's being tested by the Suldam to see how powerful she is. After another Damani makes an explosion in the desert, Egwene shows off how powerful she is by making a much larger explosion in the desert. Rena is pleased with her and she comes to her cell later and she starts washing her and telling her of why the Shan Chan are here and I think Rena believes this to be bonding and at the end of her really touching emotional speech, Egwene gives the only line that she gives in the entire episode and she tells Rena that she will kill her. And then Rena leaves shocked. In the cold open for the episode, uh, we get a flashback to 20 years prior to the story and we see guitar Amorosa, the Aes Sedai who has foretelling, and she foretells that the dragon reborn has been reborn right in front of Moraine and Swan after they had been talking about running off and living together. That, of course, is the preamble to set up the quest that they went on, specifically Moraine out searching for the dragon and Swan setting up or getting the tower ready. Well, back in Kyrian in the present day, Moraine goes before the Amarlin, and the Amarlin tells Moraine that she wants to see Rand. Lan prepares Rand to meet the Amarlin, telling him how to carry himself they have a nice little talk about sword forms, and then he gives him a nice coat to wear. Ran enters and uses some Shinarin lines to the Amarlin, and a conversation just starts out as just that, a conversation. But Swan ends up shielding Rand, pointing out that he isn't ready for anything, and a single Aes Sedai can disable him quite easily. Moraine then enters with Lan, and they try to convince Swan to let Rand go, but she refuses, saying that he needs to be under the tower's control, and that Moraine failed in her duty to try to get him ready, and she can't even channel now anyway. Well, meanwhile, while outside the palace, Varen acquires an Ogier map of Kyrian and appears to have an agenda going on, as she always does. Leandrin pays a visit to the Damadred house, and Barthanis reveals himself to be a dark friend. Leandrin tells Barthanis to go kill Moraine and his mother if she gets in the way. Anavayer hears this, and she is absolutely shocked. Later, when he actually goes to kill Moraine at the cell that he thought that she was in, Anavayer locks him in the cell with guards having alerted others, as she didn't really think he would try to follow through and kill his aunt, but she did. They have a nice little talk, and yeah. Lan goes to see Loghain, thinking that Moraine is shielded rather than stilled, and Loghain confirms what he thinks. Loghain tells Lan that he can see weaves that appear to be tied in a knot around Moraine, and he didn't even know that was possible. Rand ends up asking Lanfear for help to escape the Aes Sedai, and she decides the best way to help is to destroy the foregate, kill all the people, and attack the city blowing up the gate. This draws the Aes Sedai away from where Rand is, and Varen shows up and tells Lyanna 
who is maintaining Rey and S.H.I.E.L.D., that she will take over for her, implying that Swan sent her, but not outright saying it. Varen then proceeds to break them out, meets up with Alana and her warders, and they lead Moraine and the crew off to the Waygate in the city that she found earlier. While Swan and the other Aes Sedai are putting out the fires that Lanfear started, Lyanna shows up believing that Swan wanted her, but Swan realizes that Lyanna was fooled and sets after Moraine, who is at the Waygate. Well, at the Waygate, Moraine breaks Moraine's shield after Lan tells him it's there and to look for it. And of course, Moraine is thrilled that she can now now channel again. And Moraine opens the way gate so that they can leave, only to be stopped as Swan shows up and orders Moraine to close it. Remember that remember that Moraine is oath bound to obey Swan from the oath rod last season. As she obliges, Lanfear then shows up and disables Swan and then almost kills Moraine until Rand saves her. And they all leave through the way gate together, leaving Swan on the ground behind. And thus ends episode seven of Wheel of Time season two. Let's talk about the things I loved from this episode. And I will start with the performances. I, I keep saying this, but Sofia Akinado is awesome. I, I remember in my last review, I talked about this. She's a great actress. But then you add in the fact that we have two actresses, the caliber of Rosamund Pike and Sofia Akinado sharing the screen together. That's really just special. They are great. These are two Oscar nominated actresses in scenes together. And I find that to be amazing in this show. I also really, really enjoyed Varen. I'm starting to really love how she approaches other people, how she always seems to have something else going on. Show Varen has truly grown on me and she feels a lot like Book Varen, even if she doesn't have quite the same plot lines. And I don't know if this truly counts as something I loved, but let's put it in the category of I, I loved that it's over. And that is, I love that the whole Moraine being stilted, shielded plot line is done. It was cool to see Lan do something finally, and he saves the day in a sense by finding out that she was actually shielded and not stilled. But I don't know that I would categorize that as a spectacular reveal, but it was interesting. I'm glad it's done now. I'm glad that plot line is all wrapped up and we can move on. I thought the scenes with Egwene and Rena were fantastic once again. I'm a huge fan of the fact that Egwene's only line in the episode was to tell Rena that she would kill her. It's good to see that Egwene is not completely broken. It was also great to see how powerful she is compared to the other Damani. Nynaeve and Elaine capturing the Suldam was very fulfilling and it has me very much ready for next week. And lastly, I thought that Barthanis is revealed to be a dark friend and his capture that was played well. Although I'm not sure it was amazing enough to title the episode Days Tamar. I don't know if that was what the reference was, but I did like that stuff. But let's move on now to what I did not like. And while I won't say there was tons that I didn't like, I do feel like this episode was a step backwards in a number of ways. Let's start with the cold open. This was probably the weakest part to me, and I know some people are probably going to be excited about it. It just felt very cheap, fake, and almost kind of like an afterthought to what it could have been. It makes me think, honestly, of episode eight cold open from last season with Luce Theron and Latra Prose. It had potential to be great. It had a great premise. It had a great setup, and it felt extremely anticlimactic, and it had the wrong tone to it. That's probably the best way I could describe it. The scene would have benefited from being set at night, for instance, in the rain, or having more drama behind it, and more follow-up after it. It really needed a full 15 minutes to properly set the tone of the quest that those two were on, what it was about, how they were going to go about it, and that would really have set up the scenes with Swan and Maureen later much better. Instead, what we got felt like a very cheaply made, unnecessary fan service that I doubt played very well with non-book readers. I think it missed the mark completely in my opinion i think that was a very weak adaptation of what that could have been in my opinion I, again i think we needed more setup for swan to take the hard line that she did with moraine i'm not necessarily mad that they fought or that they went against each other again we never really got to see this in the books so this is a new plot line and i do think this might have been how swan might have reacted but I don't think we had the setup to make that super believable. So I don't know that Swan's position really made a ton of sense to me. And I'm disappointed, although I have not lost hope, that we did not get the flicker flicker scene. I'm hoping that what happened with Matt and the magic mushrooms, I mean I mean the tea, was not a substitute for that scene. I hope that wasn't what they meant for flicker flicker to be. We may get it in the next episode. We may get it in the next season, actually. But I do think it might have been cut, unfortunately, for now at least. But remember that this is an adaptation and anything can happen in the next season. They are adapting a bunch of the books at once. And so stuff is moving around. You know, for instance, we just got the Rand and Swan scene now, but that would have happened at the beginning of The Great Hunt, that type of thing. Overall, I just felt like there was much weaker dialogue in this episode. It felt like some of the episodes in season one. And again, I don't mean that to be a knock. Season one wasn't terrible. The writing in this episode just did not feel like it was on par with some other 
episodes this season. There was some very stiff dialogue and even some stiff deliveries from people like Avienda or Rand. Uh, to give an example, one thing I always look for when I'm kind of looking at the dialogue in a screenplay is when characters use another character's name for no reason. That doesn't happen in normal conversation. It feels kind of cheap. Rand did that with Lanfear, and it, it made the scene kind of cringy. He was like, Will you do it, Lanfear? Nobody does that. I, I did not like some of the dialogue choices. I felt like it was a little CW-esque. I hate to use that term, but I just want more show, less tell. And they had been doing that so well this season. I felt like this season had a few instances where it was a step back. So yeah, this was a complete setup episode to get all the pieces in the right place. And I would say it wasn't well, I, and I would say while it was not terrible, this was easily my least favorite episode of the season so far. They have a set up for what should be a great finale with some great action, but it just did not feel as strong as some of the other episodes to me, specifically because episode six was my favorite episode of the season so far. And this just took a step back to that. There were fewer great moments in this episode, and there were times where there were some things that were done that were just kind of tropey. I'm still disappointed with how little screen time certain important characters that were very well cast cough cough pot on fane are getting in this series i feel like johan myers has been wasted so far as to how good he could have been i just wish we had more pot on fane i'm sure we'll see him in the next episode but it's just a travesty to me that we didn't get more of him the episode did accomplish what it needed to in setting up for the finale so for episode seven of season two i'm gonna give the episode a six out of ten what did you think of episode seven did i get it right let me know in the comments of the video and again make sure to subscribe to the channel be updated when i get more wheel time content out there huge thank you to my patrons i could not do this without you you make all this time worth it i appreciate all of you if you would like to financially support the channel check out the patreon link in the description of the video or any of the different sponsors that are listed there and lastly if you like this video consider checking out one of these ones right here that you also might like thank you for watching and until next time peace out